Right, let's begin. I think I've got everything ready. Who knows? We'll find out, I guess. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, yeah, I don't think I've really got much to add to say tonight um, before we start. Oh, actually, yeah, I have a little bit. So um, the competition on Saturday, praise be the spiral as well. I almost forgot. Ooh, ooh, nearly incurred the wrath of the spiral gods, and that would have been that would have been really bad. Uh, um so yeah the uh the pi 400 giveaway is going to be on saturday uh we're going to be giving away two um you are going to need uh three thousand shillings per ticket and you're going to be able to buy up to 45 tickets so you need about forty five thousand uh shillings in order to buy all five tickets um thank you very much for the host andy magic knight um very much appreciated as always um so the reason for this price is because I've looked at the uh, the, the the ticket kind of award rate, uh, and it's such that if somebody does join the stream, um, they do uh, and have never been here before, they still have a chance to purchase at least one, possibly two tickets. Uh, if they kind of if they join the quiz, which will be the only th the only way to earn shillings outside of the normal methods, um, then they'll, they'll have a few extra chances there as well. Um, but obviously the quiz is is competitive and it would be very hard to uh uh to to win enough in the quiz to get all 15 tickets from from a from a start of zero anyway so yeah we're looking at 3000 uh per ticket you'll be able to buy up to 15 tickets um and of course i will be giving you 50000 tonight so if you if you want to um if you want to uh save those then you can save those and, and indeed you will have enough for the next stream um there will be no um ad points on saturday there will be the no gamble or um uh, there will be no gamble there will be no raffle either so the only way you'll be able to get shillings is by watching the stream uh cheering uh subbing following things like that um for most people this isn't going to be a problem i think most people have got well over fifty thousand, fifty thousand shillings um so it shouldn't be a problem for most people i don't think um this really is just to ensure that the the, the long time viewers have have the advantage over somebody who's just coming in just to have a go at winning the pi 400. i don't want to stop people um stop people coming in and and uh having a chance to win because uh, that's always a nice thing as well if if somebody does win like that that's kind of cool um but i i don't want to i don't want to make it impossible so so three thousand seems to be about the right amount um that means if somebody comes in and just kind of watches the channel uh and takes part a little bit they should be able to buy buy one ticket um before the midnight um deadline uh, which is when the raffle will close and and the uh, the tickets will be drawn if they sub to the channel they they will have a chance of maybe earning a second one as well and if they join in with the quizzes then they'll have a they'll have it and, and they actually manage to win a few they'll have a chance to win there uh the race will remain open so there will be a chance to uh, gamble your 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 uh, points on the race but every other gambling feature will be disabled so there will be no um say no no raffle uh no gamble uh i think that's it i don't think there's anything else but um uh can previous any any previous any comments anybody can enter this this is this is not a restricted uh quiz the only time i restrict the quiz is when it's the the mega 65 board giveaways because i want to make sure that everybody um has a chance at winning those boards and if it was just the same few people winning those boards over and over again that would be really unfair um with the Pi 400, it doesn't really matter. It's not, I, I, there's not, um, I'm not aiming to kind of equip everybody with the Pi 400. It's just a nice thank you to um, people who have kind of cheered and, and donated subs and subbed on the channel. Um, I, I've always said that every penny I get from the stream, I, I will put back into the stream once I've bought my alcohol, which I am going to pour right now. So um, I've realized I had a little bit of watermelon vodka left. So I'm going to finish that off first. It's not a lot, it's just like one glass, one small glass there. So I thought I'd get rid of that first. Um yeah, so anyway, that's that's the, the giveaway on Saturday. That's gonna um open at half past nine uh and it's gonna run till midnight. Uh I still need to figure out how to give Quadrisol some extra tickets 
Um, I, I had a look today and I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I, I may have to do something a little bit different for Quadrasil. Um, but I promise I will pay back that generosity at some point. So um, uh, the other thing is regarding the chess competition. Um, so there is uh, a week and a few days left now, a week on Saturday, basically. Um, well, it's actually midnight, isn't it, the, on the Friday. Um, I've uh, spoken to Jesper briefly on Discord uh, today. Um, and he, he's allowed me to, uh, he's, ha he's happy for me to use that as the validation tool. Um, I recommend anybody entering the competition should go and use that validation tool. It's very, very good. Um, not only will it, um, it will, not only will it give you an exact cycle by uh, a value out of the, at the end, but it will validate your algorithm against lots and lots and lots of different, uh, boards, um, and some quite 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 tricky edge cases uh, so it really gives you something to kind of aim for um i will be picking uh about 16 boards originally i was going to do six then i upped it to eight because i needed a bit more kind of to cover more edge cases but now i can kind of automate it with this tool there's going to be 16 boards i think um and i'm going to going to try and cover as many um, of the of the different kind of scenarios as possible, including some of the edge cases. I'm not going to let you know which edge cases I'm going to cover. It won't be them all, uh, but it will be some of them. So you do have to make sure that you cover all the different um, different things as well. Um, what time will a test take? Um, it shouldn't take too long. Um, it's basically um, this tool will automate the uh, the running against 16 boards. Um, so it will take a couple of seconds to run it against the boards and it will it will auto calculate everything at the end. So that's the nice thing. Um, so, yeah, that that's going to that's going to make my life a little bit easier and, and saves me the the kind of effort of uh, of having to kind of write a, a, a specific validator for this. The only thing I've got to do is pick um, pick some decent boards. Uh, I need to pick something that's different to what's in that list. Um, but, um, I do need to, uh, come up with 16 good boards that cover a range of kind of, uh, a range of scenarios. You will need to pass all 16 in order to qualify. If you fail on any of them, you're disqualified. So you, it has to be a fully accurate, uh, algorithm. Um, uh, it would be nice to let every algorithm run in parallel for each board and have a liar. <laughs> that would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? To see them all. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice little tool. I, I recommend using it, um, for, for your kind of development. You've got a, you've got about nine days left, I think, give or take. Uh, so, uh, let's get some drinking me. Thank you very much steps for the bits appreciated. Um, I will be what I will be doing is is uh, as as they run I will be putting all the the results into a um spreadsheet as I do normally on these things um just so we can kind of quickly see uh the the leaderboard as we go but um I'm looking forward to it it's the first time since January I think that we've given away more than one board um so it's going to be kind of fun to pick two uh this is the case where uh if you have won a board before you are not eligible for a, for a, to win a board you can win the competition but you can't win the board you won't get the board it will go to the next person in in the list uh, this is just to ensure that we get the boards out to as many different people as possible uh and after kind of joking about it in the uh in the channel i may actually start awarding um amk points to uh to everybody that enters uh, and and uh, probably a little bit to the winner as well, um, just as a kind of as as a kind of thank you for uh, taking part and being involved in the code side of things. Um, oh, this, what was this one about? Um, so and and eventually we will work out what the uh, the AMK points are going to mean, what they're going to go towards. Um, it's probably going to be a Christmas stream thing. So when the Christmas stream um, comes up, that they'll there may be an additional prize for the for the person on the on the AMK board. So it's just another way to earn some AMK points. The whole point of the points was to kind of get people involved in the code and in in the kind of stream. Um, 
and I think that's uh, that's a kind of a nice way to do it. So, uh, so yeah, I, I don't know if it will be this time. It will probably be the next one. Um, but we will. Um, uh, I'll, I'll work something out. There, there'll be like a. I, I don't know what it will be. It will pr- probably be um, fifty points or something for entering the competition, uh, and then maybe an extra hundred for winning it or something. So you can potentially win one hundred and fifty points uh, in the competition. So. Um, uh hey what are mk points uh so mk points um thanks 6502 kebab for the the resub appreciate it. eight months wow thank you um yeah amk points are kind of a little joke point system that andy magic knight came up with uh whenever he helped out with with stuff on the stream um but what we've kind of made them a, re- a reality and um basically they're rewarded for um having some kind of um constructive input to the code on the stream um so so that's kind of where where they've come about and i'm trying to use them as a kind of um uh, as an engagement tool to get people engaged in in the in the in the code and it's it's kind of working to be honest um we definitely people definitely do try to go for the points and people do help i mean i don't think you know everybody's doing it for the points but um and they don't really serve a purpose at the moment but as i say we will um we will try and give a, a prize away at christmas for those for those at the uh, at the top of the board maybe maybe the top three will will win some small prizes i don't know what they will be um it all depends on kind of uh what the funds are like when we get to that point and, and what's going on but yeah i mean it's um it's uh yeah it's it's a it's a nice little little system and it's kind of working out okay but i am going to probably roll the competition stuff into there as well because by entering the competitions you are being involved in the code on the channel it may not be the code that i'm directly working on but you're you're kind of involved in kind of um the 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 kind of the concepts that we're going through on the channel you're you're doing things in assembly you're doing things with the machines that we're we're interested in so um, and you're doing these things as part of the kind of channels, um, uh, the, the channels kind of, um, uh, what would you call it? I guess the, the channels kind of, uh, content, I guess, um, you're, you're helping to build the content. So, um, uh, before we start one final thing, the, uh, for those who watch the, the kind of painful stream on, on Tuesday regarding the, uh, the mega 65 mode seven stuff. Um, I actually couldn't sleep that night. I, I was so, I was so obsessed about it. I got up at maybe f- half four or five in the morning after not sleeping, just thinking about it. Uh, and I got up at that time and I spent about an hour, uh, figuring it out and I got it figured out in the end. It was the same algorithm that I started with. Um, but I just stripped it all, but I took all the kind of multipliers and stuff out of it, stripped it back. And then in, what I did instead was was work out where the kind of range was on the screen, where the range was in the distance values in memory, and then just kind of basically scale shift um, and clamp the the range to that value, and it and it kind of worked. And it just it just shows if you, if you just take a step back sometimes and just uh, relax and and don't get so because I was getting a bit stressed out about it. Uh, and there was lots of kind of stuff coming from every direction, which is fine. I I fully expect that, and I want that. Um, not complaining at all about that, uh, but sometimes it makes it hard for me to um, to to kind of pick up those those correct values. So, um, so only why angle is missing? Yes, indeed. So all we need to do now is get the uh, the horizontal positioning uh, and the actual frame of the which frame it needs to display. So yeah, it's coming along nicely. Um, uh, uh, all right cool um all right let's let's add points to you all let's start the quiz and let's get on with the code so tonight we're going to um add points or oh, 50, 50, there we go tonight we're going to look at uh checkanoid uh we left it with a few uh bugs um at the end of the last stream last week uh, let me start the race there we go uh, and tonight we're gonna we're gonna try and figure those out okay and we were we we're kind of honing in on on what the problem was um we'd we'd narrowed it down to it being the door code uh specifically the code which actually draws the characters into the uh, character set for the door at, that, at any given point um 
so yeah we just we just need to kind of figure that out properly and uh and work on fixing those bugs if we can fix these bugs tonight um then that means on the next stream we can start looking at um probably start looking at the uh robotron screens actually because uh, i mean there's only two of those but the the core concept behind them will apply to some other stuff as well like the um rooms with other kind of enemies that kind of home in on you there's there's a few that are just um robotron screens but the the the, the, the behavior of the sprites on those screens is going to be consistent through through many of the screens as we move on um okay Right, let's get some of this alcohol down here because I very much need it. Um, oh, and tonight we will be playing. Where's my little tissues? Oh, never mind. Um, tonight we're going to uh, end the night on uh, probably about an hour of or an hour and a half or so of uh, Resident Evil Two as well. After finally completing Resident Evil One on on Tuesday. And I know I got the bad ending, but I am not going to go and play through Resident Evil 1 again. Um, it was a painful experience. It was a fun experience, but it was a painful experience. Uh, mainly because of the um, terrible, terrible control system. Um, all right, let's have a look. Where are we? So the problem we have um, is when we enter certain screens... Uh, particularly this I think it is just the screens with these these doors on um the way that the screens are drawn means that these doors uh get you well you can kind of see it um the characters where these are drawn in the in the character set get overridden uh by the next screen's characters so you can see because we don't clear these you'll see the next screen's characters kind of fill in the gap where the door is if you just keep your eye on it very briefly as it changes you can kind of see it. So that's one thing we need to change. The other thing is, is that there seems to be a bug where sometimes if there is a door present, the screen kind of, the, uh, the sorry, the, the, uh, the data right for the characters overflows beyond the end of the character set or seems to overflow beyond the character set uh, and writes into uh, the Vic IO area uh, and which causes all sorts of weird problems. Uh, we've had, um, ECM mode turning on seems to be the most common one. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be happening there. Uh, maybe I did fix that towards the end. I don't think I did, though, so I'm just going to keep doing this. Um, but also, we've had, like, color changes on the on the lasers and things like that, so... Okay, it seems to be, it seems to be okay now. Okay. Blow up a mine. I think we fixed that. That was a different issue, wasn't it? Uh, this is using EC. No, this is just high res mode. Um, because I need it. So, so this actually has quite a large character set. It has uh, 512 characters in the character set. So there's a dynamic kind of character set builder. And, oh, there's a bit of a bug there with that laser sprite over here. Let's see if it does it again. Yeah, doors are yeah, that's what I said. The doors get written over as we as we move down. Um so let, let me show this in the debugger so we can I can explain exactly what's going on. It's probably a bit easier to see in the debugger. Um ECM actually would have been quite handy because it would have allowed us to have um actually no, it wouldn't have made any difference, would it? Because we were still we still wouldn't have been able to it would have still been background color, so it wouldn't have made any difference. So one of the things that's, uh, that was really important for me with this was to have the uh, the player sprite be able to go behind um, certain scenery uh, without... Oh, let's just get through this bit. To be able to go behind certain scenery without... Um, without displaying behind it. So, so for instance, here, uh, let's put that there. Uh, the player goes behind the scenery so you can see on the on the top right view how it looks and what it's doing is it's actually just building a sprite over the top of it to mask out uh, and that means that we don't see the the white of the player through the back black holes in the background so so that was kind of important uh for me to do uh ecm 
I was thinking for a second that that would help that, but it wouldn't have made any difference. Okay, so the reason the reason why this is kind of tricky and why the door, as you will see in a second, uh, behaves the way it does. Let me just get the right screen on. Uh, not that one. I'll get it right soon. No, I never get it right. I never get it right. There we go. So this is our character set. Um, and what happens is as we move between the screens, the character set is uh, used all the way up to this point here. Every characters after this are used for the particle systems. So you can see particles here. Uh, they use for the uh, the numbers and, and some other things like bullets and stuff and decals as well. So the stuff that, uh, whoops, so the stuff that hits the wall is the decals, um, and that's what these are here. The first ten of these are, are what what we call base characters, and they're used on uh, most of the screens, so they they never changed. But between this point here, say this is roughly where the base characters end, and this point here these characters are dynamic. So these will change between screens. So as I move into the next screen, you will see uh, the character set change. And as I move back, you'll see the next chunk of the character set change and so on. So it's constantly keeping an index of where we are in the character set and it's drawing new characters into the character set. This means that every screen uh, is kind of limited that it can only have maybe uh, 100, 112 or so characters, but it does mean that we can, um, it does mean that we can have as many characters as we want. Uh, so actually, it, oh, this has crashed on me now. Interesting. Oh, I did. I was getting some weird crashes actually in in the uh, debugger. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, essentially, this this character set builds up all the time. Now the doors don't belong to either uh, the, the of the of the screens as you move through. The doors are actually added after the fact. So. Once you move into a screen that has a door, it finds where the end of the character set is currently, and, the, and that currently this is here, and it loads uh, door sprite uh, door characters into that location. Uh, so you see here it's loading the, the door characters in, and then those are drawn there. When I move into the next screen, uh, the index doesn't move. The index still starts here. So when I move into the next screen, the characters are drawn from this position onwards. So that means if I don't clear the door before I move, uh, into the next screen, then the door gets overridden by the next screen's characters, and so you get some um, you get some kind of corruption as as you move between the screens. So uh, that's what we're going to probably do first is we're going to fix that um, so it doesn't happen, um, which is really simple. It just means we need to clear the door when we go through. Uh, should be pretty simple to do. Um, we just need to find the door characters on the screen uh, and and replace them with spaces. Uh, so we have this routine in here. So let me open up a couple of windows and then we've got enough room to, to do some stuff. So yeah, looking forward to Saturday actually with the Mega 65 stuff, because we'll be able to, uh, hopefully actually have something which feels like a proper 3d sprite. Uh, almost, I think. Anyway, assuming I can get the uh, the 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 arc tangent stuff done there, they should be pretty easy. Actually, the arc tangent. We've I've found the algorithm for it. So, okay. So this is where the door is drawn, and you can see this is how it works out where to draw the door. So we kind of need a, a simplified version of this, which just clears the door. So I'm going to create a function called clear door. I'm going to copy the entire draw door function, and we're just going to go through it, stripping out the bits that we don't need. Um, because this includes animations and all sorts in here. So we're going to get rid of most of it uh, and just strip it down to what we do need it to be, um, rather than work it out from scratch again. Okay, so the draw door takes... Well, let's work out what the draw door is actually being called from so we can see. Hopefully that's big enough for you guys. There you go. Uh, Anyone selling Meg 65s? No, but um, the competition that I hold every month, uh, I do give away the. Uh, hang on. I do give away the Nexus A7, um, which does allow you to code uh, for the for the Mega 65. It's as close as you will get to a Mega 65 hardware wise, um, without actually having a Mega 65. So. Uh, it's perfectly capable of running everything that the Mega 65 can run. 
Um, it's, I'd say, 99.9999% hardware accurate. There's a few minor differences, um, uh, but everything will run. Uh, but there's a, there's a only, yeah, I, when I say 99.99%, I mean 99.99% of code will run the same on it. There's a few minor, minor differences that, I, that I've kind of logged and, and will maybe get uh, fixed at some point. But almost nothing that will um, uh, almost nothing that will uh, will will cause a problem. Uh, and certainly, it's been. I mean, we've given away. I don't know how many we've given away. Actually, I think I've given away. I mean, what are we on? We're on July. This is July's competition, so we've given away at least one a month. The first month, I gave away three. So, so we've given away eight so far. There's another two going this month. So, that's, there'll be ten by the end of this month that we've given away. Um, and I also, as I give them away, I could, they come with a 3d printed, uh, case for them as well. So, so you don't just get the board, you get a nice little case that they fit in as well. Um, and the SD card and the leads and stuff that you need. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in that, check out the uh, competition, uh, in the, in the discord channel, there's still a little bit of time left to enter. Um, this month is, a this month is, a would it not be quicker to just blank the char doors? Uh, no, because the the problem is is the door chars are exactly the problem. The 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 door chars are being overridden by the data for the next screen, um, so which is why we see the corruption. That's what's happening. They're being redrawn with with new characters, uh, so we actually have to put spaces where they go. Yeah, um, but yeah, check out check out the Discord channel, um, and you should be able to uh, to see um in the monthly giveaway uh what the current challenge is we do alternate months uh so on um on odd numbered months so july is uh, the seventh month so it's an odd numbered month we do uh commodore 64 optimization challenges so you get given a challenge you have to write something in 6502 for the c64 the people who do the fastest stuff um have a chance at well the, the, the people whoever gets the fastest most optimal code wins one of these um there's a limit to how many you, you can only win one um so you can enter as many times as you want throughout the year but if you win one you won't win another one throughout the year so uh, if the same person keeps coming first then it doesn't really matter the person's in second third fourth etc will, will end up getting the prize um on odd on even numbered months we do uh mega 65 challenges where we um we do uh you get given a, a very very loose basic theme uh and and a kind of uh, usually a language i mean that's what it's been so far it's been a slightly different language each time uh and when you uh when you enter the competition in that case it's more of a raffle so what happens is is you you submit an entry and as long as it uh, uh, as long as it qualifies as a valid entry i.e it fits the theme it's done in the correct language and it, it's obeyed the rules uh you get entered into a into a raffle to win uh, and that that that's same rules apply there you, anybody can enter but if you've already won one of these boards you can't win another one um so if your name gets drawn it gets put to one side and we draw again until we find someone who hasn't won a board um and yeah, that's so that gives everybody a kind of fair chance rather than just the people who are like gods at C64 optimization. So you're saying there's a chance, yes. Uh the next month will be Turbo Rascal, yeah. TRSE will be the will, will be next month's uh, challenge. Um probably the last game challenge of the year. And then I think after that there's gonna be uh a, a, a music challenge in October. Um so it'll be a it'll be a dual SID music challenge, dual or quad SID. Uh, it's up to you um uh, but yeah anyway um so yeah because i wanted to make sure musicians had a chance to win as well because it's a great the mega 65 is a great uh tool for uh, musicians as well so it, it's, it's only fair really to to include them in it as well okay so this is where we're drawing the door this is looping through all the available doors. Okay, so this is the first thing we need to do, actually. So we actually need to loop through the available doors. The reason we need to do this is because there could potentially be more than one door, right? So um, I'm actually going to I'm actually going to copy this as well. And I'm going to put this in the front of our, our um, clear door. So this is what we're going to actually... Um, 
yeah, so this is going to take the compare the current to next state. Okay, we don't care about the door states uh, because the door, it doesn't matter as long as the door is there, basically. Um, we don't care about if the animation has worked or not. We literally just care. Is Oh, actually, we do need to check that there is a door there. Let's just have a look quickly up here. So door open, door close, door maybe on next door, next door. Okay, so we would we would check that. Okay, so next door is the the value we need to check. Uh, and that's actually compared here. Okay, cool. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load that value data dot next door. Uh and if it's not equal, we'll jump ahead. Otherwise, we'll return. So this is just going to ensure that if there are no doors, we don't do anything. So it's clear door will only work if there are doors to clear. Uh, then all of this is basically unneeded. Uh, and this is basically going to be our clear door. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to push all of this all the way down to the bottom. Uh, I'm going to change this to... Um, well, I'll call it door loop, I guess. Hey. Okay. Yes, right. So now let's go through the door and work out how we can clear it properly. So uh, get the screen look up for the door. Yes, we obviously have to do that. Um, we need to know where where on the screen this this door is. Um, we don't care about um, the door state at all. So we can kind of skip this uh, animation stuff. So uh, door is not open animated. So exit. okay, we don't care about any of that. Uh, all we need to check is, is the door vertical or not? Uh, and then change the code based on that so we've got data is vertical if not go to horizontal so it's a horizontal mid animation we don't need opening closing don't need all right so we don't need any of these animation pieces so we can get rid of those okay that strips this right down uh okay so we've got rts's here we we not going to use need those we're going to need to jump to skip at this point um, I, I know this is the labels right in front of it, but I'm just going to put it in for now, just in case I do need to add anything else. Uh, like so, right. So let's look at verticals. This is the one that we've got on the screen, uh, on this, this level. We'll, we'll add a horizontal one into test as well, but for now we'll just use, use that one. Um, okay. So we check, are we in vertical? Yes. If we come to here. Okay. This is then. Okay, so we're bashing the X register here, so we do need to actually store this X register as well. So I'm going to store this right here. I'm going to call it rest X. And I'm going to bring it all the way down to here and do this. Again, so I use uh, beef so that I can see that it's uh, uh, it's my it's my kind of... Uh, my, my kind of brain marker to let me know that this is self mod code. I'm using immediate mode, so actually internally this is what we're going to, what the, the assembler is going to see. Um, it's just going to truncate this up and nibble. Uh, why is my phone going mad? I have no idea, but my phone keeps buzzing at me. All right. Um, so this is just going to make sure we restore that value. So now we can do anything with the X register inside these. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, so this is loading the door. Okay, right. So this is actually grabbing the chars and working out where to put them. But we, we know where we want to put them. We want to put them here. Uh, so this is all we really need to do at this point uh, is store a value at this location, store a value at this location. What we do need to do is remove anything that's actually deciding what we're going to draw there because what we're actually going to draw there is zero. Um so at the moment, it seems to be grabbing these values from these locations in the char list here. So we don't need any of that. So let's get rid of that. Uh, thank you, Jani Potas, Jan, Janip, Janip, oh, Jani Potasi. Thank you very much for the uh, uh, for the follow. Appreciate it very much. You prefer boob? Yeah. Everybody pointed that out to me. I feel really stupid for having made it beef all the time. Um, 
maybe that's my childhood innocence uh, at the time. Well, actually, no, because I was probably about the age that I was became obsessed with boobs. So, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why I picked beef, but it's always been beef since I was very young. So, hey, Sean, how's it going? All right, let's get some more vodka on the go. So that was the last of the watermelon vodka. It was a shame. If only Shalom would eat beef. So I'm going out uh, tomorrow for a meal again with some other friends. Uh, and I am absolutely 100% going to order the biggest steak I can find. I'm, I'm going to completely <laughs> rebalance my beef intake. Uh, mm, real friends. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. oh, sous vide. Is that still the still the one I gave you, Sean? It's freaking great that machine. I, I do enjoy, did enjoy that. I just didn't have enough room in my kitchen for it, so it's really nice. Stick of sprig of rose meat, a bit of garlic, and some butter in a bag. Throw a steak in it. Shove it in the thing. Just forget about it for an hour. When you come back, you've got the most delicious steak ever. You just have to sear it a little bit, but very good. The great thing with sous vide, though, is you can you can do it all uh, in the bag. And because it's vacuum sealed, you can just, uh, as long as you kind of dunk it into ice straight away when it's done, uh, you can you can put it in the fridge for like up to about five days or so. Um, or you can just throw them in the, in the freezer as well and just take them out and just sear them when you want them. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I prefer a gas hob as well. I don't like don't like electric ones. Um, anyway, <clears throat> you can also use uh, sous vide to carboxylize weed as well for making brownies. So I've heard. Okay, so we're going to load zero into this, and that's what we need to store on the screen. Now, we do need to actually move across the screen to the next one, so the increase Y is there to the next character, so that's correct. But we don't need any of this, so this is grabbing the next character on the list uh, and trying to restore the X as well. So actually, we don't need any of that because the value is zero here. We can keep the same zero, so that's fine. Okay, this we need because this advances to the next row of the screen. And this works out the, the size of the the door. Oh, actually, we do need a little bit of that because we need to know the length of the door. Um, oh, no, we, we have we have that here, actually. Uh, oh, that might be enough with, with just... Hang on, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. I think it's enough to not do the increase X here, uh, but to actually compare X value that we have. Uh, oh, no, it's, it is being used here, zero. Okay, it's set to zero here, so I do need that. All right. Okay, keep that there then. Um, So uh, if it's not equal, jump to here. I'll jump to skip. Otherwise, we don't need any of that. Okay. So actually, actually, what the hell? This is. Oh, I've lost. Oh, this bit here. Okay. So branches come back to here. Otherwise, jump to skip. Okay, cool. Right, that should be that one. So let's do the same on this one. Um, so this would be zero. So we're just stripping out anything which is grabbing the characters for this, which uh, we don't need. Okay, so this actually does have to use the accumulator here to add. So we're, we're going to need to store uh, zero again here. Uh, but we don't need any of that. So that's fine. Uh, we do need to do that. We do need to do that. We don't need to do any of this. Uh, so we can get rid of all of that. I believe that's correct now. So we don't need that. All right, cool. 
so let's give this a quick try uh, so what we need to do is basically whenever we ready to uh, to exit the screen so this is before everything else happens um, we need to call clear door actually it's clear doors because it's going to be more than one door that it clears it's going to clear anything that's on the screen and actually I think we already have a clear here so if we do like that this should automatically clear the doors for us now. So let's give that a try and see what happens. Uh, 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 is weed legal in London? No, not no, not really. No. <laughs> Classy. Yeah, they they won't. Um... They won't really kind of do much if you've just got a small amount. Um, oh, there you go. SP says it's exactly, yeah. If, if it's small amounts, they won't really do much. Uh, but it also, it depends It depends as well on um, on what your attitude is as well. So like, if they catch you with a bag of weed, they're, they're well within their rights to uh, to process you and, and do whatever. If, you, if you're a complete arsehole with the cops, as some people are, then they absolutely will, you know, they will, uh, they will, bust you for it and they will you know get you in you know write you down for it but um if you're if you're kind of all right about it then the, the most cops will probably just confiscate it and that's about it so but yeah don't do drugs he says while swigging some lemonade uh well it's lemonade yeah, yeah irish um vodka uh thanks for the resub sean appreciate it all right, let's check this out. Let's see. So hopefully this is not um, not broken things, but we shall see. Okay, so there's our door. And if we move screens, it should blank out. Yeah, which it does. That's perfect. Cool, which is what we want. So what I will do is I will quickly just add a horizontal door into this screen uh, just so we can test that that actually disappears as well. Um, so to do that, I need to grab, oh, I forgot what screen number it was. I think it's screen number 11. I'll, I'll check anyway, but I think it's 11. Uh, so maps, screens, screen 11. Here we go. Um, so I think we just add another door in here. If we say this is, uh, um, I don't know, 20 across, uh, five down or something and make it vertical instead. Hopefully that, that displays correctly. And then we'll see if that, because that in itself might be enough to fix the, uh, the, the issue, but I don't think it will be. So how am I dealing with the heat the last few days? I'm not at all. I've got an aircon constantly on in the corner of my room. I've got two evaporative coolers. I've got one, uh, one over there, and one in front of me here. Um, it's just unbearable. Really, really don't like it. Uh, Oh, you're in London as well, SP. Awesome. Whereabouts in London are you? I mean, don't give me your address or anything, but, you know. <laughs> oh, somebody asked before, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, you've, you've told me this before, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have. Somebody asked uh, before, and I, I, I didn't, uh, I forgot to answer because I was probably answering other stuff. Um, what, how many different countries have I given these boards to? Um, so... I have given to, uh, let me think, I've given to Canada, to America, to the UK, uh, to Germany, uh, to Norway, two to Norway, in fact, um, uh, where else? Poland as well was another one, I think. Um... I think that's it actually yeah doncaster the the the, the kingdom of doncaster <laughs> i think that's it i think that's it it's been kind of quite even actually that it's it's been it's surprising how um how widespread the uh the the viewers viewer base is really uh uh in the uk we we long fought weather when it comes to hate oh i don't long fought weather i hate it I, I can't stand this weather. I, th I find it unbearable. 
Um, I'd be much happier with, I don't know, room if it was slightly above room temperature outside. That's about what I could could handle. Anything more than that is just unnecessary. I don't feel comfortable at all. Um, Okay, this doesn't seem to be breaking now, so uh, and that both doors seem to be disappearing correctly, so that's good. That means that code was working, which is good. Uh, I'm not seeing an issue with the door, so I'm going to go and blow some of these mines up and see if um, that does have an effect. Although I'm not sure it does anymore because I think we fixed the issues around that, uh, which was down to the the order that the sprites were uh, being cleared. And ah, there we go. We've got we've got a jam. Um, Let's take a look at what it's doing. Okay. So our stack points are FC. So this is what we saw last time. We were seeing stack points are kind of in the in the correct. Oh, what am I doing? Let me save. We saw stack points are kind of in the correct place, but um so this is kind of point three two five A. Uh and if I go and have a look there, what do we get? We get the Player is dying, RTS. Okay, so uh, well, let's, let's go a little bit before that. Let's go here. Uh, okay, where where is that then? That that I think that's. Oh, we do have a stack push here, and then an RTS, which. Oh, okay. I think this might be the issue here. So we've got what looks like a stack push here. Uh, and and then it, it might not be because it could just be where these characters. Let's go and find that player die. Player is dying. That's probably the easiest way. Player, uh, player. Was it player is dying or player dying? Let's have a look. Player dying. All right. Okay. No, there wasn't a push here. I thought there was a push, but there's not. Looking at this, uh, it looks like it's perfectly normal um so we've got a multiplexer frame being stored uh yeah so this is where it looked like the push was but it's not it's it's something different all right so that's good um okay so this is this kind of implies actually that um it's still some stuff to do with a multiplexer frame um yeah, uh, stack point is pointing at FC, so uh, O1 FC. But our code is actually at, uh, oh, actually, where was the program count pointing at before I, before I stopped? 091, okay. Uh, is that overwritten a legal code in there? No, no, no. If you look um, here, A231. So if I did uh, December 3240, uh, you see it looks correct now. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, actually. 324F, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. So that, that is correct now load the value from here and it with this value branch oh actually no this does look different slightly oh no hang on no it's 48 and with one branch of equal load. yeah no so it is correct there's no overwritten code there it's fine uh check sp in debugger yeah i can see it in here anyway um so the problem is it's jumped to 091. Um, but that implies that it's come from here. This 325A, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Because this is this is our return address, right? But actually, if it's it should be Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure this is correct. Uh, 
Interesting. Uh, let's try and replicate this in the debugger. The debugger is probably going to be the easiest way to do this um, because I'm not entirely sure why why that has jumped there, but we might be able to see something a bit better. The line before that should be a JSI. Yeah, it's not. That's the weird thing. There's an RTS there, though. That's the thing. I'm I'm thinking maybe that the RTS is um, returned to somewhere weird, like the stack has stack has been bashed for some reason. Um, uh, Actually, let's just double check the push and pulls in these places. So there are none in this one. Uh, let's just see if there are any pushes in here. Okay, so there were some pushes in this that have been removed. And there was the matching pulls. That's it in that file. Okay, so there should be a tool to <laughs> check PHA. Yeah, <laughs> think the same way, you see. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's let's just load it up in the debugger. Let's load it up in the debugger because that's always going to be the easiest way to 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 catch these things because it's going to be much much easier uh, to to look at areas of memory like this. So. On the plus side, I think I think the the ECM stuff I was having problems with before. I don't think it's happening anymore. At least I I hope it's not. Okay, so I should just be able to kind of do this for a bit until I get a crash. Um, at which point we can kind of properly look at the stack and see see what's what's happened. I mean, we can look at the stack anyway in, in Vice, but it's just so much easier to do it in this. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Okay, no problem. Let's go down and hit the mines. Let them explode. Oh, yeah. See, look. It. it all right. The the door thing is still a problem because it's set a weird D zero mode here if i look at d0 yeah see look see, it's put the screen at this location so if i move the screen back to here or wherever it is yeah there and the character set to there okay now the sprites are off for whatever reason but you can you can see here that things are are correct in the in this window here, so there is definitely something uh, that's overriding the the values uh, in in the uh, Vic registers, which is probably why we're seeing these weird weird things here. It's uh, probably a sprite pointer thing. Uh, yeah, all the pointers are reset to zero for some reason. Um, so that gives us an avenue to explore and i think the the first place to look is in the uh the door code that actually draws the door itself um so this code here is no sorry not this code uh the one that loads the doors in where's the door load code add I think it's oh no it, oh copy door charts there we go i think it's this one here so i think if i get rid of that and just make it immediately exit i think we we will get around that uh, that thing so let's just run it and see what happens uh it happens after the mines explode call me susan yeah it is definitely to do with that but it seems to be related to the door as well because it seems to be something to do with the mines exploding and the fact that there's a door on that screen at least that's what i think anyway so i'm hoping i'm hoping we can rule that out actually uh but yes if i if i let the mines explode and then move up so you can see how the doors are, are being rendered completely incorrectly now um but that's because we're not loading the characters in so it's just using whatever characters it has at that location uh, which in this case is these um but you can see how now with the doors kind of not being not being kind of copied from memory, um, we don't see the crash again. So let's see if we can let's let's turn it back on. Let's see if we can replicate the crash like with a decent amount of kind of accuracy. 
uh, can the debugger keep track if actual code is already? So you can monitor uh, particular areas uh, of code to see if, if a particular memory address is overridden. Uh, you wouldn't be able to check a, a whole piece of well you could you'd have to set you'd have to set monitors up for every every memory address but um but it's not that practical to do it that way so right so they explode okay i think you have to do it a few times before let's just try again okay it's not doing it now typical Right, so we need, we need to get some kind of we, we need a test that's going to work. Um, so we we can verify if we fixed it because at the moment um, it's a bit random. So let's just get some alcohol and some smoke in me. So I was going to stream uh, Spider Man on Friday, but with me going out on on the Friday, I'm probably not going to do that now. Well, I, I can't do that now. Um, so let's do this a few times. Okay, cool. Right, so let's go down here. The decals for the... Oh, you mean the particles? Could possibly be the particles. Ah, there we go. And this time we've got a crash. So the crash could simply be because um, one of the values in the I.O. area is being overridden. Uh, but you can see we've, we've got a crash. Okay, so what I did there was I went up and down the screen like three or four times and then... Um, then when it made things explode. So let's try again. I need to be consistently be able to do this. So I know either I can do it every time or I know that it's it's a high probability, like more than, you know, more than 50% of the time it happens. Because then if I if I know that, then I can I can guarantee if I fix it and I do like eight, I try eight times and it never happens, I have fixed it. So, right. So I go up and down like four times. Then I go down, trigger these mines and immediately exit the screen. Okay, so it didn't happen that time. So let's try it again. So that's that's fifty percent at the moment. There we go. We have to do New York again at some point, Sean, because you're old enough to drink now. <laughs> So it kind of limited where we could go last time we went. So they're a lot stricter on that. Okay, so do this a few times. Yeah, it was. It was very cool. But I would have liked to have done a bit. Oh, God damn it. This is going to be inconsistent, isn't it? It's so annoying. All right, so now it's like a third of the time. I hope to buy you a pint sometime next year. Yeah, I'm. I do want to arrange something actually for for everybody that um, comes into the channel and and stuff and can make it uh, some kind of meet up somewhere. Just nothing kind of major, but um, be fast that the particles are almost going. You think it's a particle thing? Okay. Well, we'll we shall see. Um, not nothing major. Just um, you know, just somewhere where we can meet we can all meet up have a few few drinks and stuff and uh and have a chat outside of twitch channels and stuff yeah and i'll bring i'll bring short so for those who don't know Re retro lemons is sean my son um in case you wonder why i just have a weird bond with just one person in chat oh yeah, there we go. ECM mode, right? So, so this is what happens when it goes into ECM mode, uh, which is just caused by D zero one one being edited. I think. Um, okay, so let's do it again. So, and this seems to be pointing it to being the particles. Uh, nothing major, just a casino with free drinks. Yeah, <laughs> two way voice chat. Yeah. See what I used to look like before going bald, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my looks have definitely improved since I was young. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do this again a few times. Thinking too many chars. Well, the thing with the particles is the particles are kind of sandboxed in their own, uh, their own place. They don't... Uh, yes, it's not... <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the particles are sandboxed in their own kind of location in the character set, so it shouldn't have any effect on anything. Um, it doesn't seem to be consistent, though. This is the this is the really really frustrating thing with this now, because I don't know what's triggering it. So. Okay, let me just come down, trigger. Oh, not enough. Oh, shit. We're going to. Oh, fucking hell. All right, well, that's not going to work, is it? Oh, there we go. See, that time it did. Okay, so we know that we can trigger it maybe a third of the time, 40% uh, or something like that. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn off this copy door charge. I'm going to try it again now. Now with the doors um, not actually being um, rendered at all, uh, the particle queue possibly, yeah. Um, can you script it, play some input multiple times? I I could, but to be honest, the amount of time it would take me to uh, to set that up, I I can just as well kind of test it myself anyway. Although, yes, yeah, so if I use something like um, uh, some kind of task tool, I could probably do this consistently uh every time okay so no no issue that time disable particles that will be my next thing so if this doesn't work that will be my next thing to disable the particles um Yeah, I don't like gin either. I've never never understood gin at all. Actually, to be fair, I don't mind gin if it's not with tonic. Oh, I didn't do my I didn't do my off-screen kind of back and forth. Um I don't like I don't like tonic at all. That's that's one of my big problems with gin is it's always served with tonic. Like gin and lemonade I can probably just about drink, but I'd I'd rather have vodka. Um I mean gin's made from kind of what's essentially vodka anyway, so Gin is just vodka with herbs in it. That's that's all it is, really. And I'm sure I'm sure gin fanatics are going crazy now. It's not quite the same, but it's close enough. Okay, it seems like we're not having any issues with it this way. So I, I do think it's to do with this routine, but I will test it a few more times first. Uh, Scotch and or Jameson. I do not like whiskey either. Even though my last name is Jameson, I should really enjoy uh, whiskey, but um, I don't, unfortunately. Uh... Don't like. I've never liked whiskey, and people say to me, "Oh, it's because you've had cheap whiskeys. You've not had a good whiskey." I have had some very expensive whiskeys because people do not listen to me when I say I don't like them, and they end up buying me expensive whiskeys. We go to a bar, so it goes, "Oh, you'll like a whiskey. Just to make sure you have a good one," and then they will spend a fortune on a glass of whiskey for me, and I can't stand it. It's just a waste of money. You're just throwing money away. I do not like it. Stop trying to make me like it. It's not going to happen. Uh, I call the clear doors in the clear subroutine. This is just called once. So this is called once and it clears all the doors. So the, the clear doors routine clears all of them. Uh, this is called uh, by the um, by the map loading routine, the screen loading routine. Um, so when when the new map is ready to be loaded, ready to be loaded in, when it's basically the cleanup for the current screen. Uh, goes through and calls it clear. So, uh, say the Jerry's is nice. Say the Jerry's is quite quite. A, uh, it's a harsh run, but it's a nice run. Um, if that makes sense, it's it's not like most spice runs, which are kind of a bit kind of sweet and um, and and easy to drink. Say the Jerry's is quite a quite a tricky one to drink. It's it's kind of quite a harsh flavor. So. Um, Yeah, definitely. Com compared to most spiced rums, it's definitely much harsher. Uh, I mean, compare it to like Kraken, for instance. Kraken, you can drink like neat, and it's it's fine. Um, I've got a bottle. I've still got a bottle of Kraken up there. That's um, that will get drunk at some point. Um, 
book fast. <laughs> book fast and be fortified, Warren. Yes. Okay. I think this is. I think this is the the uh, the area of problems. So, didn't we start that? Oh no, this is this is way beyond that. I've I've drank a couple of bottles since then, Sean. Uh, what happens to the particle when it goes off the screen to the right? It seems to pop when the yeah the particles. I think don't think the particles are clearing properly. Um, but at the moment, that's not an issue. I don't think they're they're causing this crash. It's definitely to do with the door. Um, I think some of the part so so because of the way the particles work, they the particles get drawn into a, a block of eight or sixteen cads. I can't remember. I think it's eight. Um, and what happens is is they get drawn into these particles. Uh, they get drawn into these uh, characters, and then the locations of these characters are stored in zero page. Then when those particles are cleared, um, it just goes through zero page, clearing those particles from, from the screen. Now, the problem is I think what's happening in some cases is you can change screens halfway between those two uh, two methods. Um, so sometimes you may, you may change screens just at the, at just the right time so that the, the the particles end up being drawn in weird places so um zero pages next to the stat it's not it's, it's definitely not the particles because this is not crashing now um it's to do with the uh the character drawing because i don't think it's the stack that's the problem uh the stack is just a side effect of what's happening sometimes when we crash um, is that the uh, the values in the IO RAM are being overridden? So basically, um, so IO RAM is uh, what well, it's it's sixty four bytes of repeating values. Um, it goes from D zero 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 to D zero three F, and then it repeats itself basically. So if you write into any of those values all the way up to D four hundred. Um, then you know writing into d zero four zero is the same as writing into d zero 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 it's just a, it's just mirrored basically all the way along so what that means is you've got a one kilobyte block of i o ram at the beginning of i o ram d zero zero to d four hundred right up to the sid registers um that if you write something into it is going to end up in one of the vic registers um now the vic registers themselves stop at two no, two two F. I think is the last one. Um, the 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 sprite color for sprite seven. But that does mean that three quarters of those mirrored memory locations between D zero zero and D four hundred have valid I O areas that they can be written to. So what it means is, if something is overflowing from say C eight hundred to D zero zero zero, which is where just happens to be where the character set is is um it's going to end up being written into this area and it can overflow a whole thousand bytes into that area and still write into the into the io ram which is why we're seeing weird kind of um so before we saw that the uh the the screen and the character set locations changed and um, we saw like garbage on the screen and we had to kind of switch back to the right character set and the right screen that's because d018 was overwritten uh, sometimes we see ECM mode, that's because D011 is overwritten. Uh, and sometimes we see a crash, which is probably down to D012 um, being, um, well, or D, no, D0, no, it won't be D012, will it? Because you can't write to that. So, uh, oh, no, you can actually, you can write to it because you tell it where the next raster should be. So if we, if we accidentally set the raster somewhere, um, where it's already gone past it could end up in a kind of infinite loop not not really um uh not really setting the right the right values and basically get stuck there and so we'll see a freeze as for stack i'm not sure what's happening there it's probably something to do with um a return values somewhere causing a problem but i think the problem is down to down to this door because we're not seeing it when uh it's not happened once since i since i stopped this function from running so uh, this is going to be my last chance. If I can't make it work, if I can't make it break this time, we're going to assume that's the location and we're going to go ahead and look at fixing it. So skip between here a few times. Okay, then go down, trigger the, the mines, and then go straight off the top. Yeah, it hasn't, hasn't happened. Okay. Uh, what did you win? What did you win? I don't know what you won. Oh, McDonald's land. <laughs> wow, seriously? Fucking hell, how did you get McDonald's land? 
That game is older than you. Oh, you copied it. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well done. Well done. That's how to play it, man. That's how to play it. That is how to play it. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. If you don't if you don't know what it is, if you if you know that you don't know what it is, don't have a guess. Just wait for other people to guess. And if they get it wrong because they've done a typo or something, then you can you can probably uh sneak in and win it there. So yeah, well done. <laughs> or add a two on the end, yeah. <laughs> That's the other one as well. Yeah, if you know it's if you know it's misspelt then 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 fine. But if um if somebody guesses something and it looks spelt right, just add add a two on the end, so Okay, um, so it's definitely this this routine um, in the doors. So it's this one here. So what this routine is doing is basically saying, okay, we need a door on this screen. So I'm going to copy a door and I'm going to, uh, the door characters from memory and I'm going to store them somewhere. Uh, so we just need to have a look at where that's being stored. Um, and it seems to only be being stored here, right? So... This is where the target is. So I reckon, I reckon if we have a bug, we can go and have a look at this value in memory and see what it's at. So this is at, uh, actually it doesn't have, why does it have a freaking label? It should have a label. Well, it has a label, but it doesn't have a location. All right, let's, uh, that's weird. I don't know why it doesn't have a, Okay, now it's not finding anything because I've typed something weird. No. Okay, I'm not sure why that's not giving me the right number, but um, normally it would give me the address, but it's not doing. Oh, maybe it's this one. It's just the same. Oh, hang on, screen temp door font. Maybe it's the reuse of these these numbers that's causing the issue. That could potentially be the problem. Let's uh. Let's just have a look first. Let's see if we can find this uh, this goddamn thing in memory somewhere. No, it's not giving me the freaking address, is it? Why is it not giving me an address? All right. Uh, okay, that's fine. We'll we'll go and find it in the zero page and try and work it out. Uh, where's my zero page? Here it is. So the value that it's trying to use is uh, this one here. Uh, I have no idea where that is. All right, let me just put it. A... Right, that'll help me find it. All right. So now you see I'll be able to see it in my in my list up here because because it's loading from cartridge all of this it's really hard to get the memory addresses sometimes uh what's it going to be is it going to be right at the beginning i think it is isn't it uh god where is it ah here we go uh zero page was Dorvet, so C5 basically is where we're looking. All right. In that case, let's get back to here. And let's see if we can make it crash again. So what we're trying to do now is basically run this with the actual door routine in. And then once it crashes, we're going to have a look at the memory location C5 and see if we can see what value is in there. Maybe you should check the code for multiple labels for the same memory location. So I think it's, I, I do think it's all right, this one. I think I did this deliberately, but it could be that some of the, some of the code that we're using may actually be um, using to, using it where it wasn't before. Um, I can't remember what screen temp vec is used for though. Um, but let, let's just see what it's doing first. It could just be that it's using the, the wrong value in there although i don't know why screen temp vec would cause it to write into that area either i feel like it's not that at all but um uh 
but two labels for the same memory is something I do do use now and again, especially in zero page to try and uh, to try and save on kind of zero page locations. If I don't need them to both be um, used at the same time, there's no point in having separate uh, locations for everything. Uh, but I don't think that's the case here because of the exact location that's actually being drawn to. So, okay, it didn't fail there. Okay, let's do it again. So I'm just going to run this now until it fails, which should be like within about three goes at, at most. It's going to be good to start moving on to actual screen code. This we're very close to it, um, and the game actually has the majority of the mechanics that we need. Uh, there's really not an awful lot of mechanics left, but one of the mechanics we do need is a game that doesn't crash. So, Uh, yeah, def definitely, we do. We do get that issue. Um, not saying it, it. I'm not saying it's not the issue. I'm not completely ruling it out. I'm just saying it, it's it's not unusual for me to use uh, two two memory locations for the uh, for for uh, more than one. Per uh, sorry, one memory location for more than one purpose. Um, I just don't think it's the what's causing the issue here, which is why we're trying to get it to crash and go and have a look at that memory location and see see what it's actually in there. And once we know what's in there, we can see, uh, right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, see, we've got a different thing here. And it seems to be jamming at 031D, which is a very weird place for it to jam. Um, let's go and have a look at C5. Okay, so C5 is actually correct. It's pointing to, uh, well, actually, this is pointing to a screen location by the looks of things. So it is using the screen temp value. Um but that shouldn't cause any issues with the door either. So, okay, let's let well, let's try it. Let's. I mean, it wouldn't hurt. It cost us two bytes to do this. So let's just do that. Let's give it its own own space. We'll leave these sharing for now. Um, if it fixes it, great. Um, I would like to have understood why these two have been happening at the same time. Let's go and have a look where that's been used. Okay, so the screen temp is being used by the door animation itself. So that is after the copy. So this, yeah, this is why it doesn't really matter because this happens before the animation. So it shouldn't matter at all, this. But uh, all right, let, let's try it. I, I don't think it's going to matter. I think we're still going to get a crash here. Something in an interrupt using the temp. Possibly... Um, there doesn't seem to be anything else. I mean, these are not in the interrupts. I tend to try and keep my interrupts kind of quite slim uh, and not really do anything in them. Um, for this, for this is one of the reasons why. Um, is it only causing issue when you switch screens while the minds are in the middle of it? Yes, that's the weird thing about it. That is the weird thing about it, which which makes me kind of suspect it's nothing to do with with what we're, we're testing now but let's rule things out as we go along so yeah so it seems to be when the mines are in the middle of their explosion i'm going to do this kind of, i switch between the screens a few times because of the way that the characters are copied to the screen so um I want to make sure that I've kind of passed over one page of kind of characters, basically. Okay, it does seem to be related to the actual explosion itself rather than the particles. But let's try again. Let's try a couple of times. When you said what? I've not. I'm not ruling anything out that anybody has said. I, I'm. I'm just trying to work from the most probable to the least probable things. Um, see, I didn't even trigger the the mines then, and it still crashed. Well, actually, a mine. A mine was kind of triggered down. Oh wait, hang on. Is there a? Hmm. 
And about. And about. Um, I'm going to look at... What's it going to be? Unfortunately, all my, my kind of things are in weird, weird things. Weird kind of names and stuff. Yeah, that's... It, your brain has gone to exactly the same place as mine as just now. I am wondering if a mine that is still ticking down and hasn't exploded uh, is causing the problem. Actually, let me just run it again. I just want to. I just want to verify this because I'm not entirely sure what happened here. Um, I just wonder if the mines that are like the destroyables are not resetting because uh, they do have internal timers as well. I mean, obviously, if you trigger one. Uh, so if I just kind of come down here and then immediately, okay, no, all right, let's try it. Uh, try, I'm going to try it without the kind of the flicker between the two screens now, see if I can get it to, to crash, but bear in mind as well, I have changed that, um, that memory, uh, location in zero page now to use its own value. So if we don't get the, the IO RAM, it could be that it's two issues. It could be that there is an issue um with the io ram which is caused by uh, the reuse of kind of zero page variables because this doesn't seem to be crashing now let's try the page flicking stuff uh but it could also be that the the timers on the mines themselves um cause cause an issue The frustrating thing is it's definitely related to the doors. It's related to the, the door clearing. So uh, that's not so simple because the maps are built from uh, character files, uh, from charpad files. So actually doing that is, it sounds like an easy thing to do, but it's not that easy to do. Um, I can actually, maybe I could go into the, well, I should have to also do the... Actually, yeah, I can do it. If I go into, um... oh, I don't have fucking char pad. All right, I'm just going to carry on like this for now. But yeah, I might, I might load char pad up in a minute and try and try and add one in. It's such a small thing. This it should be, it should be fairly easy to find. Of course, it's been a pain in the ass. So I'm going to do my normal kind of switch as well. So I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to go down, trigger these like that. Don't seem to be getting this crash, though, anymore because of the zero page change. Which is worrying because the, they shouldn't be running at the same time ever. Uh, in one case, it's uh, copying the door charts as you enter the screen, and the other one is is actually drawing the doors, which which would only happen after this anyway. Um, yeah, I mean you can see here that's that's how it's set up. When you when you add a door, if you need to copy the door charts, it gets added in here, and then it draws the first state of the door. Uh, the ads are all done in uh, in the init in here, uh, which is called before any of the the update functions, which are what call the door updates, and the door updates are the ones that that use the screen vec to do animations. So there shouldn't be any reason why those two overlap at all, uh, but it does seem to have <laughs> stopped the, uh, the 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 I/O crash for some reason. Uh, take care, Anonym. Thanks for joining. It's such a great tune. Okay, so it's swapped between the screens a few times. 
Okay, then dive down here, trigger as many of these as I can. Mm. Okay, uh, it feels like those have been resolved. I'm not convinced though, I'm really not convinced. And we still get a weird IO crash, uh, a weird uh, stack crash. The stack crash makes me think it's something to do with the the interrupts, as Nikomo was saying as well. It does seem to be something to do with those. But I don't know what triggers that either. Um, it could be to do with the intermediate state of the mines down here. So maybe if I try and trigger that one and then come out before, right, okay, let's try that. And then failing that, I will go and grab the... Uh, Actually, I could probably do this on a different screen. But it's to do with doors as well. It's 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 a combination of the doors and... Oh, wait, hang on. Is it because... So this is where we copy the door. Door font vec, okay, which... has a clear carry flag here, yes. Clear carry flag here, yes. If we're at the end of font space, then it will keep at the end of font space. It goes to here, which wraps the index. And that takes... Okay, so now that's... Damn it, no, it's not that either. I was just wondering if there was a weird, uh, oh, hang on. Hang about. Well, there's a clear carry flag missing there for a start. And now that, could, that definitely could have caused issues because what that would have done was meant that this was never met. No, sorry, not that one. The, uh... oh, no, it wouldn't have actually, because it is using a different value. It's using font index. Okay. But it would have pointed to a weird place in the, in the, in the font. It would have been off slightly. But it's, it's not that that was causing the issue though. Damn it. All right. But, uh, that clear carry flag should be in there though. Yeah, because we don't know after this. I mean, it's it's very unlikely that the font index is wrapped at this point um, because we compare it to the end of font space and wrap it ourselves. It doesn't overflow and it only advances by one. So it's very unlikely that the this would be... I, 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 it's almost certain that it would be clear at this point, but I'm going to put that in anyway, so... Can you increase the speed of the ship so you can move it? Yeah, I'm just going to try uh, quickly just to see. Because um, I think what I can do is trigger one on this side very quickly. And then when I come back, it should still be there. Okay. Yeah, I'm not having issues with it though anymore. I think that has fixed it. I think there is just another issue that's a jam, um, which is probably going to be IRQ related. Okay. Okay, cool. Hey. Uh, so, oh, you're saying goodbye, Sinla. Okay, well. In case you were saying hello, hello. <laughs> but if you weren't, goodbye. To to uh, anonym, uh, whatever. I know what I mean. I know what I mean. Too much, too much vodka already. Um. Ah, see, there we go. CPU jam. Main jam at zero one one seven. All right, let's have a look again. So again, our stat pointer is at 01 FD. So our stat pointer is at quite a high location again. Oh, oh, this is interesting. This has actually written. Oh no, wait, what was that actually? Oh yeah, 
P0BF. Uh, so let's do 3 p 0 uh, Okay, so it doesn't read that very well. Let's do 3 0 a 0 It's a bit better. Okay. Uh, okay, so the crash is happening in the middle of all of this stuff, which is all our, our update. Ah, okay. Wait, where is map end then? Okay, so this is actually our main loop. So if we look in, in here, so I think the zero page stuff was, um, does she's the Italian chow? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I think the zero page stuff was definitely an issue. I'm not sure why it was an issue, uh, but it may crop up uh, later on. That we might find out why that, that is the case. Uh, <clears throat> but it seems to have resolved it by, by doing that. Um, but now the issue appears to be in our main loop, right? So this is our main loop. And you can see a list of all the things that happens. Um, on a, on a frame by frame basis. And one of the things that happens is basically all of this, right? Uh, and you will see here, we've got this map tables update, um, which implies that one of the screens actually doesn't have its update value set in the map tables or the value that is, is being caught. So, so what this map tables update does is if we go into, ah, yeah, this would make sense actually. This is being called before it's initialized. Okay, well, that should be easy to fix. So what's happening is, is in the uh, loader code, we have this update function and the update function has a value which we write to basically. Um, and what happens is, is when a screen loads, it takes the, uh, it takes the value in map loader, let's go to map loader updates. So when the, when the screen's initialized, it runs this piece of code and this piece of code works out where the, where the screen code is and sets the update vectors to, to match. Right. Um, so in the, in the case of, um, in the case of an update function, what it does is it takes the, uh, screen vectors plus zero. So that comes from, uh, let's open up some extra, let's save that one. Uh, these screens here, it takes all, it takes these locations and these point to the beginning of our screen code. So this is our screen code here. And you'll see at the beginning of these screen codes, we have the init update and exit. And these just jump to locations in, in here. Every, every one of these screens should have an init an update and an exit. I just want to check, does it, yes, yeah, so we do have it in here as well. So this is, this is correct. Every screen that loads has one of these. It basically. The map loader loads the data in from, uh, let's go back, let's put all these in order. Uh, so let's load, what have we got here, loader. <clears throat> so the loader has a list of all the screens, the behavioral code for the screens. Um, we import them all here, all the, all the ones that we, we've written, we import here. And then this is a list of every screen and which behavioral code it uses. So the default is zero. Uh, which is just the empty file, which just has, it's, it has a jump in it. It has to have a jump in it. It has to have this terminating byte in the persistence area. But other than that, it's just three RTSs. So if this, if this, if a screen doesn't have a, be a behavioral piece of code, it will default to that empty file, basically. Uh, then certain screens do have pieces of code. So we, we have a one at word 11 and we have one at the, whatever the screen is below this 21. So there's one. Uh, here as well. So you can see we've got 21 and we've got 11. So these two screens are what are being jumped between. Now, if we go and have a look at those, so this is screen 11. You can see we've got an init, we've got an update, and we've got an exit, we've got an init update, and we should have an exit down the bottom. And we've got one in here as well. So the problem isn't the fact that these files don't have those. I think the problem is, is that when the, when the map loader goes to load it in, this piece of code that initializes the screen is not setting these up at the right point. Now, luckily for us, the map loader sits at 8,000 
and the update function is right in front of it there. So we can go and have a look at 8,000 and we can see where the update is. So this is saying our update is at OE4C. So if we disassemble OE4C, you can see we do not get the uh, actual proper address. So some value is being written incorrectly here um, or it's just not being updated quick enough. Something is something is uh, bef before it's ready. This is being uh, this is being bashed with the wrong values. So this is where the problem is. And this is because what we're doing, we're using some kind of crazy self mod code to deal with um, assembler OOP with interfaces. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, screen, yeah, you're right. This is kind of like our interface. This is this defines what the the interface for our our behavior is, and and then we're using uh, these screen codes to actually uh, generate them. Um, this is a this is why I think it's really useful to learn assembly uh, for anybody doing any kind of serious coding. Learn a little bit of assembly because you'll really appreciate what your compiler is doing under the hood. Um, and and you'll really kind of get an appreciation for how to lay things out. So so the the layout of this file is very important. Um, for instance, we have to make sure that the the file always starts with these three instructions, because that means that given any location in memory, we know that the location in memory of this screen file plus three is our update function, plus six is our exit function. So. Um, if you use the C64 debugger, you can rewind the code. Yes, uh, it, I do that quite a lot, but it's not as it's not as easy as it sounds to uh, to manage that. Um, but what we can do instead, definitely, um, is we can make this happen again. Check the value that's in this location. If the value is kind of consistently this this number, we can use the breakpoints to actually find out exactly where it's being written. The problem with the rewind, I find, is it doesn't always it doesn't always catch it properly, um, and you end up kind of yeah, it's it's trickier than it's than it seems. Um, but we can we can try it out. We can try it out. But I know I've I've done this a few times with pick and mix and had loads of issues. So. Um, but I think we can do it just with um, with this memory address anyway. So let me try and let me try and replicate it. So I, I think the problem is going to be in this piece of code here. Um, my suspicion is that this is being called incorrectly, like the values are being called incorrectly here. Either the value of x in here is wrong um, or whatever. But we, I, I absolutely know what's happening here. What's happening is the um, and this is actually where the uh, where the um, the debugger rewind doesn't really help us. The update is wrong, right? So uh, what's happening is is it's jumping to this location in in, in memory. Uh, this is currently pointing to. Oh, I've closed it, but it's currently pointing to somewhere else, which should have a screen behavioral piece of code. But instead, what it has is just some random data that's uh, that's there because the value that it's pointing to is completely incorrect. Um, <clears throat> And that's because uh, this piece of code here is writing it incorrectly um, or not writing it at all. So that's what we need to do. We need to figure out what what this value is here when it when it breaks and 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 get to this piece. But that's going to be pretty easy to do because what I can do is I can okay we can use a debugger to do it definitely. But instead of using the rewind, what we'll do is we'll see if we can get it to break again. Uh, we'll just use a normal. Uh, vice for now um we can see if it breaks again we'll take another look at the memory address uh, and see what's written there and then we'll do we'll stick a breakpoint in the debugger um for uh any time that the uh the the given memory address is written within a certain range which we know to be breaking um so i'm just going to do it triggering this one here because that seemed to be enough okay it didn't that time but let's It didn't break. The other problem as well is the inconsistency of it all as well. It's, it's difficult to get it every single time. By the way, Jesper, thank you very much for doing the um, uh, the, the chess um, uh, validator. It's going to be really, really useful. It saves me a, a quite a lot of lot of extra work. Um, means all I really have to do is generate a couple of uh, 
boards that fit a few of the edge cases um and we can we can test many many more kind of um scenarios per per user than we would have been doing otherwise so really 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 cool that you did that thank you very much and really useful to everybody else as well oh there you go so we've hit that we've hit that problem again it's it's actually written over the d0 location so now you can see what it's actually overridden here is the horizontal expand um and you can see some of the some of the sprites have got their horizontal expand turned on and some of them haven't and so we're seeing this kind of weird broken line so um the mine is reset. Yeah, the mine will reset. If you leave the screen before it explodes, it will reset um, because the, the actual countdown is not persistent. So, Okay, so we haven't solved the D00 issue. That is still a problem. Um, okay. Oh, God. Going around in circles, this one bug. All right. Well, actually, I, I do believe it's two bugs. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced it's two bugs. Um. But you can see the the I/O area right is is still an issue. Um, if we come back, in fact, it's going to be broken now because oh, there we go. Right, okay. So we've got a we've got a monitor break here. So we're going to have a look at eight thousand, and you can see again this value is OE4C. So just to put this into perspective, let's let's run this. Uh, normally, and we can have a look at. Uh, have a look at that memory location under normal circumstances so so we're just going to have a look at that memory location under normal circumstances we should should see yeah we can see proper um actually f84c seems oh wait it's it's this one isn't it it's, it's the second oh hang on shit i was looking at the wrong values 83f8 okay well that seems correct anyway Yeah, there, there definitely is. That's exactly what the I.O. RAM stuff is doing. So uh, just trying to work out what the hell it is that's doing it, though. We seem to be running out of kind of running out of ideas for what's causing it. Um, so just to check that memory location again. So you can see this. So ignore this one. This is not the right one. It's these ones here. This is our actual update routine. This is our jump routine okay so these all look kind of normal um the 4c is the jump basically um so these all fit in the right area of memory so that's correct so what i want to do is is cause the crash um and come back to it but we uh, at least at least we know it's not the zero page stuff now which is good because that was kind of uh, kind of unexplainable for me i couldn't quite work out why um, I would like to see what this value is um, when it happens again, which I didn't think of checking just then, and I should have done. <sighs> okay. 83 changed. What do you mean? So they will change. Every time we move screens, they will change. Those values will definitely change because they point to new screen code. So each new screen is going to point to a new piece of code so you can see uh oops you can see here you've got 83 f8 uh 83 fb 8010 uh, it's actually these two that are the important ones because this is kind of our, our init and our update um and i believe these are uh oh no it's got a swarm on it so it will be some it will be a specific piece of code but you can see there that's that's what's happening on that screen so and then if i move to this screen we'll get a different set of code there um so you can see now we've got 831c and 831f because we're pointing to a new uh new screen piece of code so that's correct still uh, I mean, we know it's correct because the screen, the screen is working. The screen wouldn't work without it. So, and then if we go onto this screen, we should get any uh, yet another different one. So you can see eight four zero e eight four one one.
Okay, so let's try. Um, let's try and break something. Okay, so let's do it with this one first. Because that mine seems to be enough to to trigger it. If I just keep going down and triggering it and coming back. No. All right, let's go off the screen a few times. It's not breaking. God damn it. It's the inconsistency that's really frustrating with this. Oh, there we go. All right, okay. So now if we go and have a look at C5. So C5 is our uh, our font vector, right? And we can see it's at CD28. So it, it should be right into the correct place. So even though it seems like this, this routine is the one that seems to be responsible for breaking stuff, um, it seems to be writing into the correct place, uh, this line here. Um, but something has indeed changed D000, right? So if I go and have a look at this location, we look at D011, we've got BB, right? So if I put uh, D011, if I put like 1B into it, uh, and then go, screen is back to normal again. Is the Y wrong? Yeah, but well, again, why would the Y be wrong? The Y starts at seven, decreases down. I, I don't see why. And even if it was, it wouldn't write all the way up to D zero one B, a D zero one one. Sorry, I'm not sure why. Yeah, well, I can put a watch point on D zero one one, but the problem is, is it's written every frame, right? There's lots of stuff happening to it on on every frame. So it's, I tried that on the on the last the last um uh the last stream um uh god okay something to do with the doors right something to do with this routine causes it But why? Why would it cause it? What would break it at this point? So we have a Y that's restored here. Is there any reason why? Okay, that is historical. Okay. We copy door chars, then we draw draw the chart, and then we increment to the next door. Okay. See, this, this is really weird. It makes no sense why this is breaking. <laughs> hey, my command, welcome. Show the code again. Which code? This code? Could that be overriding any of the... Yeah, when a bomb explodes, you persist that it's gone. Could that be overriding any of the door bars? I don't think so. There is one other thing that we can check, which is in zero page, we have this particle list here. So this is going back to what Andy was saying at the beginning about the particles. So. Let's see if something weird is happening in, in the particle clear space. Because what this does, this cre creates a record of where the particles are, right? So the screen positions for the particles. Um, no, the IRQ is very, uh, very, um, very light. It doesn't do very much inside the eye. Everything's done by setting flags at, at points on the screen. Uh, and try and keep as much out of the IQ as possible for these these very reasons. So, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the. Um, I'm gonna go with what Andy said. I think let's let's go down the particle route. 
Um, it's maybe just a, a coincidence that because the mines trigger particles that aren't part of the exhaust, and this laser also has some particles attached to it, that we may be getting some issues there. Um, so let me try and trigger... Oh, but you see, see why? Why would that trigger then in that case? Okay, but let's go and have a look at uh, in, in memory. So... Um, Particle clear space. Oh, it's just so. I hate bug fixing. I really do. It's it's the least pleasant thing that you can do. Uh, oh five, a five eight to six seven. That seems weird. Oh yeah, I guess that's right. Okay. Five eight six seven. Hang on. Sprite indices. Here. Why is that there? It's a six, seven. Oh, oh, was... so, okay, let's just go and have a look at that location. So you can see these are all screen locations, um, and that's exactly what I want to see here. Uh, this should just be screen locations of uh, particles that need removing. There should be uh, there should be eight of these which there is all the way up to C3E8, yeah. And none of these are, are right into D0. So that would be the, the other thing to look at, is, is one of these suddenly right into D0, um, which is the IO ROM stuff, yeah. The, the other problem with bug fixing is it's not a very, it's not a very pleasant thing to do on stream either. Um, it's it's kind of boring. It must be boring as hell to watch, and it's kind of it's kind of difficult to um, to have any kind of enthusiasm for it um, while you're being um, while you're being watched. <laughs> to be honest, uh, what's the bound checking on the particle create remove? Okay, so let's go and have a look at that. Um, so this is where the particles are. are Created and removed. Uh, there is in here uh, get next particle, which will load the Y register with. Uh... Oh, could it be this actually? Because we have a variable number of particles, don't we? Between the screens. Hmm. <laughs> if you would be bored, I would go to sleep. Ah, uh, true. And somehow I've kept forty-seven people viewing, so it must be it must be some value in it somewhere. Uh, although I'm pretty sure half the time you guys just come in to watch me get drunk or gamble. I know, I know there's probably at least half of the people here that gamble. Yeah, the, that's the other thing as well. The particles do get cleared when we leave the screen, right? So we, yeah, next particle. Oh wait, what's wait, what's this? Oh no, that clears the screen, but that's actually not the same thing. This is the here. Yeah, it shouldn't be that either. And you can see it's actually clearing the particles, and that's what we're seeing in here with the. Uh, the C3E8 all over the place. That's what this is doing. C3E8 is a screen location, which is kind of off screen, not off screen, but kind of um, has no impact if you draw. Actually, it is off screen. It is one one byte off screen. So, um, so I don't think it's that either. So what I'm going to do, I am going to temporarily just put this in just to rule that out um it's not that though is it? it's max particles and we'll see if we can get it to break while while doing but i do i think there are two issues here i don't think there's one issue i think there's two issues so the other problem we've got right is that when we change screens the actual irq handler changes and the reason it changes is because we need to still be able to play the music while loading from the cartridge. 
So for anybody who's done any cartridge work on, on the C64, you'll know that if you load, if you bank in a cartridge, you also bank out the kernel. So that means anything we want to do that uses the kernel, we can't do with the cartridge banked in. Which doesn't sound like a huge problem. However, with IRQs, that does cause us a, a bit of an issue. Because what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to, um, sorry, it banks in the kernel, not out, not out. If you bank in a bank, it banks out, it banks in the kernel. Um, what it means is we can't use code up in E000 to the, the end of the 64 kilobytes to store anything that's going to run while the screen is changing basically well while the banks uh, are being banked in because of the way that the loading system works anytime you switch between two screens the cartridge banks in uh, a character set a map and then it starts to copy those into the character set and into the screen where it needs to copy them so there are two screens there's the the screen that you're moving to and the screen that you're currently on um, and they get well, one gets written uh, and then slowly scrolled into the other um thank you very much sword 976 for the follow appreciate it i shall cheers you and then i shall have a fresh vodka so what happens is when you when you're in a normal gameplay the irq is responsible for doing a few tiny little things not very much but one of the things it's responsible for doing um is playing the music so it's it's done on the irq because it's just the easiest place to to put it it means that it's timed properly um, and will play efficiently, you know, um, at the same the same rate and at the same point on the screen, and it makes it easy for me to control where that actually happens. The problem is, is if we just stopped the IRQ when we uh, change screens, which we'd have to do because we've now banked the kernel in, which means now the kernel interrupt is going to be the one that that fires. Um, if we be if we do that then basically we need to, um, well, actually, no, the kernel wouldn't fire. It wouldn't fire at all. Um, but the problem is in order to in order to fire an IQ, we'd need to go through the kernel if it's banked in. Um, but if we didn't do that, the music would just stop between the screens. So we have to make sure that we change the IRQ over to use the kernel IRQ. Um, and therefore, there are two IRQ systems. So you will see in here, We've got the music only IRQ. Uh, and music only kernel IRQ. And you see they, they both do very similar things, but this one actually has a bank switch in it to make sure that the correct bank is banked in. So we basically store whatever bank we're on right now, just in case there is some banking going on. There could be because we're using cartridge. We store that value, uh, we store the value 35 in, in 01, which banks things in properly for the music. Then we run the music. Um, then we acknowledge the interrupt. Then we restore the value 01. We restore all the other states, which is like X, Y, Z or whatever. And then we return. When the kernel's running, we don't need to do most of this because at this point we know if the music only kernel is the one that triggers, we know that the, the kernel has been banked in. So we know what the bank state is at this point. We just need to uh, call the music routine, acknowledge the interrupt, and then jump to the, the kernel end routine. Um, but that shouldn't cause us any issues. But I, I mean, these are famous last words, right? This is this is the problem with these these things. It could be very much that's what's happening here. Um, see that there we've got the 0314 0315 so what happens is is as soon as you bank the cartridge in all right kernel oh i'd never write it I, I can never remember which way it is i think it's with an al isn't it i can never never remember i think it's a misspelling on on the c64 but i can never remember which way it is anyway so anyway doesn't it doesn't really matter um yeah, misspelled. I thought so. Yeah. But the point is, is uh, what happens is, is as soon as you bank that cartridge in, what happens is the IRQ will then start looking 
in this location for where it needs to jump to uh, instead of looking at FFFE and FFFF. Um, because now we're running a kernel piece of code and we have to make sure that that is, is running correctly. So, so we need to make sure that these values are set properly, um, which we do here and these points to this kernel version. Um, and it's kind of just handled automatically. As soon as we, as soon as we bank the cartridge in, it will switch over to this one. And the, the end result is, is that the music keeps on playing, but I don't think this is what's causing our issue. I, I honestly don't. Oh, we've still got the screen shake to add in here as well. Actually, I can probably add the screen shake back in because we know that wasn't causing the issue anymore. So actually, I'm going to put that back in because we've been able to replicate the issue without the screen shake. So while I remember, let's put that back in. If it was interrupted, it would be any screen swap. Yeah, exactly. There's a few things that make it seem unlikely it's interrupts. Uh, that that being exactly um, one of them as well. Kernel, I should... Oh, man. From now on, I'm going to spell it like that just to annoy people that read my code because I think that's great. Okay, so that's not a thing. All right, let's find where that was. So, yeah, so what I want to do now is play around with the particles, see if we can figure out what the hell is going on. Um, this is in constants, isn't it? That's uh, just called max particles. All right. First of all, let's just make it crash again, just because I've talked a little bit, so I can't remember now. So I want KFC. I'll just check in. He's just the heat. <laughs> so I seem to be able to make it crash just by triggering this and then immediately going out of the screen. So. But it didn't happen that time. It just seems to be right. Ah, there we go. But you see, there was no. I crashed as I went this way, not the other way. So let's go and have a look at things. So if we're going to have a look at C5, yep, yeah, C8, E8 is is absolutely fine. That's a that's a correct location in the character ROM. Uh, if we're going to have a look at five seven. Uh, oh, hang on. That looks interesting. Interesting, which makes it look like it is the particles. Okay, so let me just check the particle locations. If this is, if it does end up being the particles, I'm going to give Andy 10 points because he mentioned this right at the beginning. Um. But we need to prove it first, so. And that's going to be the tricky thing, because we've not been able to prove anything yet. A particle clear space, 5A. Okay, so I was not in quite the right place. 5A. Ah, but you can see, look, we've got... So this is our particle clear space. So values in here are going to have the value 2, 0 written to them at some point. So, sorry, the value zero written to them. So C3DC does indeed point to a screen location. That's kind of fine. Although, actually, that's kind of... Oh, yeah, no, it is on the screen. But then 0292, that's not on the screen. That's somewhere random. C270, that is on the screen. That is not. 0235, that is not either. That is not. And these are. So you can see there's eight particles here, but at least half of them are incorrect. So... If doing binary box testing between sprites, how many checks would that be? Um, what do you mean? How many checks? Do you do you mean like how many compare statements? Um, you could do it in. It depends. Four would be the most. Um, you compare against the left, compare against the right, compare against up, compare against down. But you can do it in. You can do it in two if you. If you if you do subtraction, so if you subtract, so if you if you basically take one of the bounding boxes and, and normalize it down so that the instead of the left and top being at x y whatever, it's at zero zero. Um, then, but I mean, it's four max is is probably 
um, a, a good good starting point. There's a there's a little bit about that in um, a few of the videos, so just check through some of the videos for for that. Um, also, I think that's in the PDF actually. In the PDF files, I think they they have uh, some stuff about that. Yes, some of those are stack memory. Yeah, uh, at least two of those are stack memory. Um, so the question is: Is why are these values being written like this uh, in, into here? Why why is this value being written? Um, so let, let's just so now we know kind of roughly what's going on here. Let's look at a normal kind of situation. Let's go into a screen that's got particles all over it, and let's have a look at what what it looks like down there. Um, and we should see that it doesn't have those uh, those values like that. So let's go onto this laser screen because this does have lots of particles on it. Okay, and let's go and have a look at that memory location. Was it five A? You can see every single one of those locations is inside screen memory. So this is correct. So the question is: is why are those values being set the way they're being set? Uh, what what is causing that to happen? Um, so we can actually do some checks here. So we can put some breakpoints in. Uh, we can check what's writing to these values because the the only time those values should be being written to is when you uh, when you draw a particle on the screen. You will see. Uh, where is it? Is it in? It should be in here somewhere. Oh, clear particle. Yeah, here we go. We write to these the location, the screen fetch. So wherever we've fetched from, uh, we remember that address and we store it here. Uh, and that's what it's doing here. You can see it's grabbing the, the upper byte and storing that and then grabbing the lower byte and storing that. Um, so let's have a look. Is there anywhere else that's actually writing to these locations? OK, so there's one here in the clear. Uh, particles and this is just writing the value zero to them so this shouldn't be shouldn't be an issue and this is where um uh, this is actually writing zero to the location it points to this is this is why we write into zero page because now we can use this indirect x uh, zero page uh, to do the clearing which is really nice because it um basically speeds up hugely so um <laughs> So catching up with stuff there. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be to do with this, right? It's it's definitely going to be to do with this. We just need to work out what part of the code is actually writing over that, because I don't think it is. Here we're writing C three E eight, which is the the default when their their particles are killed. Um, they're written with this value here. Okay, that looks fine. That looks fine as well. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot that's that's doing these these changes. Um So, let's go ahead and and see if we can get this to break in the debugger now. If it breaks in the debugger, um we can then put a breakpoint in on those values and see what's writing to them, uh, writing like incorrect values to them. Um, why is that not loading? For some reason that's not loading. Oh, because we've already got the debugger open. Okay. In fact, we can go and put that that breakpoint in now. It should be pretty easy. We're just going to add a couple of breakpoints in. So we know that the uh, the memory address for the start of this is uh, five. A was it? I think um, it was written in here somewhere. So we're going to play this for about. Uh, we're going to do this for about another forty-five minutes, and then we're going to load up uh, Resident Evil Two and start playing some of that. See where we can get on that. Okay, so five A. So that means the very first location uh, that that we want to test if it's outside screen will be five B. We'll check the upper byte. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go into here. And we'll add a load of these and we've got that one again i don't know why that one keeps appearing but um so zero zero five b and we want to see if it's anything less than uh actually just less than 
uh, C0. And then we'll do the same for 5D. 0, 0, 5D less than C0. So anytime these numbers are, are written with anything that's outside of the screen RAM, like lower than the screen RAM, it should trigger this. And if we do one for every one of the values, oops, 6, 1, then hopefully we should catch it. Zero, zero, six, seven. Wait, why am I missing one? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. It's because it's I'm thinking of how the, the assembler has written it down here as to zero, six, seven. Um, and that should be zero, zero, six, seven, C zero. Okay. And That is being written like that because yeah, I don't know why that's minus two. It really shouldn't be. It should just be. So it should be that. Okay, don't know why it's minus two there. That's weird. Oh wait, hang on. That's yeah, no, that's right. All right. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm not going to touch it for now. I'm just going to leave it. But uh, it's, it shouldn't matter anyway because that area is being cleared properly for it. So um, I, do, I don't want to accidentally press kind of start and break things. So let's have a look. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see. Uh, so in theory, all we need to do is trigger some kind of particle explosion. Uh, while moving on and off the screen. So we'll start by just trying to trigger this one here. Okay, that didn't break it. Trigger that one. So not broken. It could be due to the kind of position in, in memory of the... Uh, of the particle kind of as the laser moves as well. So I'm going to try and trigger. Ah, there we go. So we've got a breakpoint. Something has triggered and it's saying store at this location. So this is in. Uh... OK, our accumulator is now zero one. Uh, this is in the clear particles, I believe. It looks like it's missing a bit of the uh, bit of the thing here. Unfortunately, the, the, the freaking, I wish the source code monitoring would work properly here, but it doesn't. Um, but looking at this, I can work out where this is. Okay, so this is basically writing in, uh, in this one here. So this is this piece of code here. And we can see that, oh, well, that doesn't help. I was hoping that would, uh, that would make it easy for us to see both, but it doesn't. Let's do it that way instead. So our Y register is zero. Okay, so that's fine. That's the first character. But it seems to be grabbing a value that is not uh, screen location. So I don't sure where it's getting um, particle MSB. Okay. Oh, branch if equal skip particle count. Ah, well, actually, we can probably fix this by changing the way this works. But it looks like this value is wrong here. So the particles MSB comma X is is obviously going to be zero one rather than uh, something else. So it looks like the particles MSB is wrong. So let's find out where that is. Uh, particles dot MSB. Where's, where's the particle list? Ah, it's down here. Okay. Particles dot MSB. Uh, okay, this is going to be fun to find. Um, Okay, uh, if I look for that, I should be able to find it. All right, hang on, next particle. Give me a memory address. Oh, why is it not giving me the memory addresses there? That's so annoying. It stopped giving me those memory addresses. I don't know why. 
Okay, it's fine. We can go and find it in the code. It's, it's just going to be down the bottom of this this block somewhere. Uh, so let's go back into here. Let's go back to this. Oh no, I've reset the freaking thing now. God damn it. Okay, but it seems like the problem is that it's coming from... The... That's a draw gun. Kill particles, draw particles. Okay, so it seems like this value is wrong. X is fine, Y is fine. So it can only be the particles MSB. So let's go and have a look what where this is being written. So we set zero to say that we're not using it. And this is where this value is being set to zero one. So again, we can do the same thing. We can kind of look at the uh, the memory locations of here. But this the problem is we seem to be we seem to be writing the wrong value to that at some point. But the only place that seems to be happening is where has it gone? Is here. Which would imply that screen fetch is wrong. So update particles, let's have a look. So screen fetch is set here. And screen fetch is set to a particle MSB position. Okay, well we we not necessarily gonna be um we need to figure out where it's first written. So we need to figure out where screen fetch is actually from. Where is screen fetch? Is that gonna be is it that's gonna be zero page, right? So let's have a look where else that's being written. Yeah, so it's a zero page location. Where is it actually being set? It just it doesn't seem to be being set anywhere other than by the particle MSB. Is there an add? Here particles get next particle. Wait a minute. Is this just a, like am I am I initializing particles incorrectly at some point? I feel like I am. So here we're using screen row MSB. Okay. And screen row MSB is definitely not zero based. The screen row MSB definitely uses screen RAM as a, as a base. Okay. So that's good. Uh oh what is going on here? What is going on here? Oh no. Oh, screen point. Why am I adding two? Oh, because there's two particles. All right, no, that's fine. All right, I thought there was something very weird going on here, but that looks fine. Uh, screen point could be wrong, I guess. Um, what is this? This is hitting a piece. Okay, I don't think it's that, but it could be. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I don't think it is that one. All right, let's have a look at this one. Uh So this is killing all the particles. It's not that one. Uh, 
Okay, this is all the particle file we know about that. Laser, okay. Yeah. I mean, there is there is a, a workaround. There is definitely a workaround, which is if I go into here uh, and find where particles.msb is being stored. Uh, is it that one? Like, yeah, this one here. At this point here, I can actually do a check. Whereas if, if this value does not fit within the screen to actually clear the particle itself. But this is in the update particles, which means this adds an overhead, which I don't like. Um, the other solution is potentially to do it here. Um, and make sure that this particle... Did I check what Jesper said? Which... Oh. Six three three seven. Okay. No, I did not. Let me check that. So is it not loaded? Six three three seven. All right. Thought it was a particle going off the side. Yeah, possibly, but those are bound checked in a very different way, though. So let me just have a look what's at this code location that Jesper's talking about. Sorry, I didn't hear any any listening until until Sean did that. Uh, mate, I'm not seeing anything in that location at all. It's at 6337, if you look at the ASM. Oh, you mean the, you mean the, uh, okay, you meant, you meant this stuff here, right? Let's see, I didn't see, well, how did you find that? I couldn't see that. I'm not sure how you saw that, but well done. It's in the ASM. Is it? Oh, did I write? Ah, oh, fucking hell. I must have written it already. No. Wait, how, how did you see that? I didn't see that at all. I mean, cool. I don't know. I don't know how you saw that, but um, because I can't can't figure out where you got that from. But six three three seven. Yeah, so you can see there C one C one, and as I move down the screen, they do indeed change. Okay, very cool. Yeah. In the C64 debugger, I couldn't see that at all. Oh, did you see it in R ah, in the labels at the side? Ah. <laughs> oh. Of course, read my own freaking code. That would help. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just, I'm being slow, aren't I? Uh, let's get some alcohol in. That's what I need. Liquid logic. Okay, but to go, I mean, it doesn't, I was just a bit slow, right? Um, I should get five for us to check the chat. No, 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 no. You actually have to solve a problem, Sean. 
Can you search through the labels in the debugger? Um, I don't know, actually. Maybe. But anyway, it's, it's, I mean, the the problem is we know, we know that that's the issue now. We need to go back. So, um, right. So just to go back to what I was looking at, could it be the laser? It could potentially be the laser because we are doing this particles MSB store thing here, um, which should be storing screen LSB and screen MSB. But this could for some reason be wrong as well. So let's find out where that is. Okay, so that's a byte in here, um, but that's only ever written from screen row LSB and screen row MSB. It could be that the screen row is too much. Maybe the Y is too big. Oh, which actually, if this is right, Andy could be Andy could be onto something here, because Andy was the one that pointed to the particles, and he's also just potentially pointed to um, the particles moving off screen. If they move off the bottom of the screen and the char row comes back as 25 instead of 24, then technically it could be reading from this location instead uh, for the MSB, which would actually be the low byte of, of here. Um, although, no, that wouldn't make any sense either because that would be... 25 yeah it would be here wouldn't it which does not point to a value which is 0 1 or 0 2 which is what you would expect uh for the msb it would be 0 0 not 0 1 or 0 2 particles char y so maybe char y is not resetting properly um Like it's not it's not being clamped properly to the bounds for the laser. And this is literally just for the laser particle. No, because this is coming from this is coming from these values. Okay, so it's not that, I don't think, anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, we can, we can figure this out. We can, uh, hang on, if we add laser particle. So if we don't add any particles to the laser, then we wouldn't get a crash. All right, let's try, let's try that. Let me just uh, turn this off. Should crash when the laser is at the lowest screen position on the right. Yeah, that's where it was crashing. But I'm I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I, I mean, I, I've, I've been wrong so much so far with this. So I, I hope I am. So it's kind of there, isn't it, basically? Um. Now we've got the the laser particles turned off. We should maybe not see a crash at all. So it's okay. So I've triggered three of them and not seen a crash. Let me turn it back on. So it could just be that I need to check the bounds of the laser particle to make sure it is in the right place on the screen. God, that laser is causing more problems than, than it's freaking worth at the moment. So this is going to keep going on and off while the laser moves. Okay. Laser effect is definitely worth it, yeah, but it's just <laughs> a pain in the ass. 
causing me so many issues. All right, that's not triggered either again there. So I, I, I do think it's that though. I do think it's that. Um, wow, this has been the entire stream. Two and a half hours so far. Well, two two hours if you count the kind of drinking and preamble. Okay, so go down here, trigger this. It's it, it's just right laser here. <laughs> oh. I mean, okay, so uh, what am I looking at again? 5A. Oh, no, but see, the, this looks correct all the way along here now. There seems to be a, a mishmash of different things happening. Although this could be that the the uh, I.O. RAM is overridden in some area now. Uh, and this is actually, um, this screen is actually working. I was going to go and have a look actually. D000. Uh, D018 is this one here. I'm not sure if that is correct. D011 is correct. Is that right? It would be no, it's not right, is it? But it's the screen is completely blank though, which is weird. So five sixty eight is correct. One five is that correct for that location? Well, the screen would be at zero, the character set would be at 01, so this would be, this would actually be something like, uh, something like that, I think. I know, but it is definitely that, that's just, okay. But the screen border colors have changed and everything, look, border, border has changed, it's like a reset has happened. Uh. Oh, wait. Have you worked out what this one is? I forgot that this one even existed. Uh, all right. Ah, oh, man, debugging is not fun at all. Yeah, with that turned off, it doesn't seem to happen. So... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get it to crash without that on. If I can't, I'm just gonna cap that value so it doesn't go above uh, twenty four, and I, hopefully that will fix the issue. Thanks, Jesper. Take care. Thanks again for the uh, for the chess validator. I'm really looking forward to using that. To be honest, uh, I had a little play with it. It's really good. Uh, it's going to be really useful for everyone in the competition anyway. Ah, oh, no, see, there's a crash there. All right. Oh, man, this is so frustrating. Ah, oh, but look, it seems to have crashed in the music this time. I wonder, I, I'm starting to wonder if the music the, the switch between the IRQs is, is a problem as well. I mean, it shouldn't be. I'm trying to think what would happen. If I was to just Disable interrupts. Come back in, all right. Fucking hell, that's, uh I think I need to take a couple of weeks off soon, you know. Just, just, just chill out. I'm getting so fresh, stressed out with everything at the moment.
does the music use the stack? Ah, I'm not sure actually. Um, Twelve dollars twenty on each shares. I think cuts my grass this weekend. <laughs> Just Spider Man streams. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I have got a couple of like uh, in a few weeks' time. Uh, I think middle of August. I'm going to take probably a whole week off at that point because I've got some stuff. Uh, hey, Warlock. Uh, what's happening is we're just in bug hell again, so. Um, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think the stack is, there's something is going on in the stack. Um, because if you look at the, look at the values in the stack here, there's some kind of recursive thing happening here. 3182, whatever that is. Um, if I go and have a look at 3190. Oh, that's just the multiplexer. So actually that's kind of, kind of normal. Um, Wait, why is there a music routine there? Oh, this is uh, okay. Why is it called multiplex entry? This is the I. Oh, it's the IRQ. Okay, this is the IRQ. Yeah, so this would imply actually that the IRQ has been triggered shitloads of times. Which oh, why, is, why is my mouse doing that now? There we go. Oh my god, headache. No, it isn't recursive, so... But this looks like... If you look at the... Uh, if you look at the memory stack, the, the, the stack, it looks like it's calling... Actually, it looks like it might have been calling all the way. Yeah, look at that. It's been calling all the way through through the stack, basically. So, for some reason, we've got into this point here. All right. So, I think there is two things definitely going on here, and we need to kind of we need to separate the, these two out. Uh, I I think I am going to stop in a minute. I am going to um, uh, I am going to put uh, Resident Evil Two on. Uh, but I think what what's going on here is two issues. So, one issue I think is what Andy was saying is to do with the particles. There seems to be a case. Um, a relatively rare case where a particle reaches a boundary, um, a particle belonging to the laser reaches a boundary. Um, and it's either on the very bottom of the screen or on the very right of the screen. And what's happening, I think it's probably on the very bottom. And what's happening is, is it's trying to read a table value for the screen rows uh, for a row that doesn't exist. And therefore it's writing an incorrect value into the MSB, which in turn is writing some random values into into some uh, random areas. But then there seems to be a second, area, a second problem. And that second problem seems to be that occasionally the IRQ uh, gets into this, this thing and it runs through this, but then it runs through it again. Now, the only reason it would do that is if it didn't, if we didn't um, acknowledge the interrupt, which means that one of these tail calls would be failing for some reason, or something here is breaking like this is happening um like we're breaking out of this midway or something weird like that and and ending up in a in a kind of weird irq loop um which is why we, we in this case we see a crash like this so this is a this is a different issue um but it's caused by the same mechanic the fact that the screen has to scroll between the two so there's a two there's two very different things going on here i do need to address them both um i i'm probably gonna well i mean we have to keep doing this anyway um <clears throat> the screen transition shouldn't trigger any additional irqs but what it could potentially do because it happens over the course of eight nine frames or something like that take hair quadrisol uh, thanks for joining. 
<coughs> because it happens over eight or nine frames, the, the IRQ has to trigger several times during that routine. Uh, and because the because of the way the cartridge copying is happening, the routine can potentially be either a kernel routine or a non-kernel routine. Um, there are two versions of of the uh, of the non-kernel routine. One which is our standard multiplexer and music and everything, and does does everything that we would not see in the normal flow of the game. And then there's a cut down version, which is just the music, which is just for that transition period. And then there's the kernel version. So there is three, potentially three different IRQs that get triggered. I don't think this one is causing uh, an issue, but I think what's happening is when we jump back to the game running normally, we aren't clearing up these IRQs properly. So this kind of acknowledge is kind of failing for some reason, and this one is triggering and, and it's causing all sorts of weird havocy things. So I think there's uh, something to do with this system that I need to figure out. This would probably happen anyway, regardless of, of the screen. Um, if I if I move enough between two screens, it will happen anyway. So that's one avenue to explore. We need to see if we can get it to just happen on any screen. I think we will be able to get that to happen. Um, the other one is, is related to the particles and certainly turning the particles off in the laser seem to have the effect of of, uh, of making it work. So I'm going to turn that back on though for now. Um, again, I don't know exactly what's going on here. I suspect it's to do with this, uh, these values here being incorrect. Um, but we shall, we shall see, I guess. But for now, I'm going to take a quick two minute break, guys. Uh, when I come back, we'll, uh, we'll, We'll stick Resident Evil 2 on and see how far we can get. We're going to play Leon tonight. so. Uh, but yeah, thank you for, for those who uh, are not sticking around to, to watch Resident Evil. I know the debug, at least for me, the debug streams are not the, the most exciting streams in the world. So uh, apologies if you were, uh, you were expecting something a bit more exciting. Um, but we shall be doing some more, hopefully not so much bug fixing, but um, we shall be doing some more on... Um, Saturday with the Mega 65 car engine. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Two or three minutes, that's all. Uh, just need to go to the loo and uh, uh, stand up for a second, let the blood rush back to my feet. Uh, I shall be back in a few minutes, guys. Be right back. 